On today's episode of Strike Gold, we talk about how culture and social media is affecting the television and movie industry. And we talk about how to come up with new content ideas when you run out of content ideas for your B2B blog. This is Jonathan Kahn and Roy Provarchik, and you're listening to Strike Gold. We're starting? Yeah, we're, we're live. Well, live, but pre-recorded a week before. But live. Here, you and I are live. Episode 10. Oh my God, 10, man. That's Big like a commitment. 10. Yeah, now we got to do this forever for the rest of our, our lives. Our podcast is going off to buy like a Porsche or like a... <laughs> no vacation ever again. Like, Everybody's not- coming to a blog party at Rise. <laughs> <laughs> don't. It's actually a very small don't, room. Yeah, don't, yeah don't, don't, don't. Don't come here. This is actually a great time it's for... It's also like pre-recorded, so <laughs> like, there'll be nobody here when you get... <laughs> this is a great time to say a quick message from our sponsors. When a fintech company falls in love with a chair and a desk, it's happening at Rise. A co-working space for fintech companies. And we're back. And we're back, yes. That was great. Yeah, that was uh, the best one we had so far today (laughs) in this episode. Roy, I want to talk to you about something I'm really really getting interested in. All right, so I love television movies and stuff like that. I've been talking with with a company that actually represents some, some cool channels. Um, here locally on, on television. And just being that I watch a lot of documentaries and stuff, I watched one that explained how the rating system works and how it's kind of flawed when it comes down to cable and all this stuff. We have all these technologies like VOD and... Video on demand. Yeah. So you can record the show, whatever it is. What happens is that the that doesn't actually play any effect in the ratings. So if you are not watching the show live, when the show goes on at 3 p.m. or whatever it is, then the ratings don't show that you're watching it at all. Are you sure they're not using the data from what they get, like, in the VOD? I'm, like, they might be using the data, but that's not helping the places that are the channels that are making these content. They're not being judged on the ratings you sure? unless it's... You asked them and that's what they told you? Yeah, yeah. I know this is also, like, a standard thing in the around the world. Um, no, which is around, kind of, no, it's, no, no, no. Yeah, in no. America. I, I actually heard about it in America. Around, no. And here... You know how many shows got back? To, like, Family Guy was canceled and then brought okay, back to Okay, so that's the life. interesting thing. These things happen because of engagement. So you actually said it very nicely. Following, following is nothing in comparison to engagement, right? right? So what ends up happening is when there's enough engagement and it floods the internet and creates something, then that's great. And it can bring back a show or it can even do uh, the uh, Netflix, Rick and Morty. Netflix is building their entire career. Okay, so Netflix is a, is a really and big Amazon player. And Amazon as well. Amazon Prime. Amazon too, yeah. They're both basically a different type of player because of the fact that their rating system is not judged on seeing it exactly, like, mm. exactly when the okay. thing goes live. So what I thought was interesting was kind of the play of engagement here and what's happening. The way that media used to be was a television show was made and it would dictate to the people a level of culture at the time would all be dictated by the media. Yeah. Um, and now because of this engagement and because of social media and all these other uh, tools, there these shows have to play by the rules of what we're in. Uh, which is kind of marketing kind of like thing. We yeah. all kind of, we all about them, you know, we, we're we there on these platforms, but now they're running it for their marketing. They're getting the voices of the communities and the people listening to these things. And I thought it was so cool to think about, there's a new uh, movie out, uh, I think it came out August 15th, I think it was, Crazy Rich Asians, right? Okay. And the director said I was following one of the actresses on Instagram and she was mentioning how, you know, the way society works right now, we're, they're more accepting to see a full cast of, uh, you know, eth- ethnicity. Um, and he kind of turned around and said, like, and she wrote this whole post about how, like, Hollywood is, is, is fucked up and it's messed up. And the director turned around and was like, yeah, Hollywood is. Wait, hold on a second. I'm Hollywood. He's like, I'm in Hollywood and I'm making movies and stuff. I'm part of the problem. Right. And he turned around and said, we got to do this kind of movie. And went on and doing it. And he, there was this whole thing about how he is now taking the understanding of where society is right now, where, where we're going, 
and saying, I'm going to produce content based on that. Mm-hmm. And I thought it was so cool to kind of say, oh, wow, this is like, this is where the engagement is. It's not yeah. about turning around and saying, I have a kid show or I have a, a telenovela and I I get engagement yeah, you there. Basically, you start from like, this is what I feel or listen to people wanting to get. Yeah, it's like, and it, I'm gonna I, give. it would be, I think it would be smarter for most of these channels to use their social media as a tool to understand what right. they want. I love that you're saying it because I actually know what we're going to answer today and it actually kind of resonates. Yeah, I feel like there is a kind of connection to the what like we were discussing before. TV shows, TV channels, all these different things can listen to what we want as a society and community and say, hey, we can build that for them. We can tell that story. And it's going to be very interesting for our kids one day to kind of look back. It's going to be more of a time capsule. I'm not sure. So there's a good side and there's a bad side for it. You can create better content because you know it's what people are expecting or wanting to get. So you give people more of what they want. But I think... That thing in entertainment, by the way, it's danger- a little bit dangerous uh, because what's actually happening is that most of the best movies or most of the successful movies right now are just like franchises going on forever. If, like I, I watched, uh, I went to the movies the other day with my daughter for her first time. We went to see. Oh, the- really? First time? She's three years old. Ah. Okay. Yeah. She's three. Yeah. Wow, she's very tall. I thought she was 14. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, no, she's extremely tall for she's her extremely, age. She's and, the and, tallest third. And, and drives the car, so I get where the confusion was. Why does she have a job? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but so, uh, so we went to see The Incredibles, the sequel. Oh, yeah. Now, the first movie was like 14 years ago. If you hey, think about it, the best action franchise right now is like the Marvel movies, right? Yeah. And it's basically all based on stories told like so long ago. And none of it is, like, creative or... Um, no, but that's what they're doing now. They're switching it up. They're bringing uh, cast members that were, or, or characters that were men, and now they're making them women. Or they're... Yeah, but... Did you see the new Spider-Man uh, commercial? They had to have shown it in, because it's animated. They didn't show it? The new Spider-Man what? is this amazing animated thing. My wife's friends the actually worked on it. Thing? Yeah, the multiverse one with the uh, African American Spider-Man. Oh, with the Miles Morales Spider-Man. Yeah, I mean, it's I really know. cool, man. I love it. But, I love that. But the they actual... have been on the comics for like a while now. Yeah, but that's the, the, a while the, the, now. But I'm no. talking about they didn't have it in the beginning when no. Spider-Man came out. They're telling uh, no, you. No, uh, so, yeah, but but what actually like comic storytellers were always good, but I think that why I think it goes to movies and entertainment right now. Everything is just like. Taking shit out of the... By the way, I was kind of bummed by the movie. What did you think of Incredibles 2? I think it was way too complicated or dark for... for I was cool and complicated and dark because Disney but movies are generally long, dark. Very, extremely long for what it is. No, what annoyed me is is that it's the same fucking story as the first one. Ah, uh, that's... It's, it's A guy uh, hires you, them to be a superhero. Have you, you get have, it again. Have you ever seen Mission Impossible? Oh, it's the same story. <laughs> have you ever seen every Die Hard... Have you ever seen any... Bruce Willis movie, except from The Fifth Element. I'm a cop, good at his job, about to... Yeah. It's all the and Nicholas same no, <laughs> And No, but that's the thing. That, that I think Marvel Comics for now is the only one that, that is able to create new no, but plot I think that, ideas. I think that what we're doing is, is that we're... Okay, so, yeah, our attention span is shortening. I'm not saying, you know, like, I'm, I, I don't, I don't think I can take mine. No, it's lack my... of creativity and risk-taking. No, uh, I get it, but when you movies. turn around, we're full, we do so many TV shows that are fantastic now. No. We're really good. What? There aren't that money. What? What are you talking about? I'm watching, like, Norwegian shows and all these stuff from all around the world uh, on Netflix, and it's all great. Like, yeah, Dark was fantastic. No, but... You have uh, Stranger Things, which is an homage to all this stuff, which is Stranger fantastic. Things, Mr. listen. Mr. Robot no, you know, was no, great. You know what? Wait, wait, wait. Stranger Game of Thi- Thrones. First of all, Game of Thrones Rick is, and Morty is horrible. Time. What? It's the most boring show in the world. What, you, pr- what are you, against incest? No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> are you Are you some kind of what weird... What are you, some incest hater? <laughs> <laughs> no, first of all, Game of Thrones is it's based on... Again, it's based on the books, so it's not an original kind of show. Mm, That's what I mean. Like, There's yeah. no originality in creating stories anymore for TVs and... Uh, yeah, but what is this TV show? It's a script in the end. And what's yeah. a script? It's a story. What's a story? It's no, a concept. It's, no, it's no, like, I, don't, I disagree. But Game of Thrones is basically like five minutes of like, what happened last episode? Oh, right, that's the thing. 45 minutes, nothing interesting happens. And then, then the, someone dies! And then like the last five minutes, like, oh my god, this is good. Oh, it ended. Oh, I wish that other 40 minutes would be as good. 
It's no, a, but that's the way it is. You know, when you tell a story, it's you such have a fucking no, no, it's no. That's so life. That's how it is. When you tell a story, it's not life. There's like a whole bunch of boring no. shit, and then there's a punch. No, but there's no punch. Any joke is like there's a, someone dies. That's yeah, the punch. There's no punch. Stabby, stabby. Also, punch. also, it's like it took them three seasons to get from one castle to the second one, and then somehow in the eighth or seventh season, it's like, like we gotta end this now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's like there's no more books. It's like oh, I have to warn him. Turns around, he's in the outer castle. No, that's fucking. It's such a horrible show. Oh yeah, show. that was great. It's, like it's that. a horrible show. Their plot sucks. Everything sucks. They're fucking waiting they for winter. They invented the hyperloop and they just went in this tunnel thing. And Listen, they're <laughs> waiting for winter for like fucking eight years now. I don't know what's going on there. <laughs> winter is coming. Is it? <laughs> is it? When? <laughs> it's like they're fucking living in Israel. Winter is winter not is coming. never coming. Yeah, it, it might be a little. We're bit in cold. Tel Aviv. It might rain a little. That doesn't yeah. mean it's winter. Yeah, it's no. It's a horrible show. And um, I, I know. I, no, but I like. But these, so wait, but they're I, really I, good wait, shows I, now. I, I can't, agree. You can't. I know. I don't think there's like what? a lot of good shows. There's like. I don't know, a handful of good shows. Oh my god, there's amazing shows. No, I Roy, think, but I, I think, think I think you watch television no, anymore. <laughs> I think I think European shows now are better than the US ones. Because they're more regional for us, because the US ones are all the same fucking shit. I, I, I feel like I said like so many bad words I could just avoid using in one sentence. What? The shit fuck. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, I feel fine. like I crammed them all. I also one. I had one episode where the whole episode we never said any curses and I said I said uh, like shit or something and I was like should I remove that and I was like no why would I remove that that's how I talked <laughs> um, anyway um, so uh, I think creativity creatively creativity creatively creatively yeah. that's the word thank you you're welcome uh, movies and, and TV shows are now are so unoriginal. And you know what? Fucking Stranger Things, the season one was amazing. Season two was fucking bullshit. Yeah, but it's, it's a, that's a curse. That's a curse. No, it's everything. not a curse. It's always number it's two. Ba- no, 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 no. It's not a curse. It's just fucking bad writing. No, the, you know what it is? It's not bad writing. I'll tell you what it is. Breaking it's, Bad it's, was amazing. Season Six one was under- written in a way was where it wasn't necessarily going to have a continuation. There was an ending that kind of gave an open, a small opening. But for the most part, they were like, here's a good story. Boom. And then they were like, we're signing you for a second. And they're like, Shit! <laughs> like, no, you, but the, you don't have weird characters pop up in the eighth episode just being like, hey, I'm new in school, and just have it unless you know that you're gonna have it's, something it's new. It's so bad. It's bad. Stranger Things 2 was so fucking Listen, I think that I think that the miniseries is that, that, that are coming out, like The Sinner, Right, which oh, now has a second uh, season, so, which is also amazing. So the miniseries. So, so, so I think, I think if there's you, a lot of really great miniseries. There's a lot of really good stuff uh, out yeah. there. I just feel like this. Here's the thing: when you're watching a movie, they need to. And they have to dumb it down. They need to show you things and really make sure you see it so that you can understand the ending. No, so that the you can be like, oh a- my God, wh- is that a listen, knife on the ground? Listen, like they need to say like that. Like the on same- a TV show, they don't need to do no, that. But they listen, can drag it's like it. The plots are not interesting. Every story is not everything I mean, is no, everything is a basic no. story, and then someone comes up with a way of twisting no. it, perspective wise. Uh, yeah, but they don't twist cinematography. It. They don't they twist it anyway. So um, this is interesting. So we're talking about content now, right? Yeah, let's because this is a, then, this is a marketing advice podcast. Oh yeah, it is. So is it? Yeah. yeah it so is, let's. It is. So so, so it says on the door, Roy. <laughs> Because every time we count to rise, we put a different stick yeah, on the door. Yeah, we stick things on the door. They don't like, like please it. don't stick on that yeah. door. Um, um, so, uh, so let's. So we we had this answer. Uh, again, marketing people, just don't be anonymous. Just like don't be afraid. Nobody will think you suck if you don't know how to do something. Uh, so, so we have another anonymous two. The question, following on the anonymous the question, one from last The time. question that we got was basically. Um, so somebody working for a B two B company, and he was like, "Listen, I think I wrote every blog post possible. Uh, what else would you write? Like, how would you? What process would you make to keep coming up with ideas and trying to find other things you can write about?" And okay. You so to, you I have to, like a yeah. weird thing to this because I want to ask you a question. At, at this, what is the purpose of the content that he's creating? No. So and a lot of these, a lot of people have a blog. So no. And n- there's nothing going on there. It's wait, SEO and, that's and pretty converting, much it. nurturing and like getting traffic, nurture and convert. When a company, a B two B company, has a blog, right? How many people are actually going to this blog? Depends on the niche. <laughs> no, I get it, but I'm saying like it's not HubSpot. You know, like how how are these like do do they really need these things? HubSpot. Like, no, HubSpot is great. Oh. Uh, Kissmetrics, HubSpot, these are blogs where you're like ah, but you know what they're doing? No, but they're B two B. Yeah, I get that, B2B. but I'm saying I'm saying beyond those, the regular companies that are doing this. So so who's you, actually going? So you there? know what I know. I don't say the name because I don't get the, the permission, but it's like one of the. It's an Israeli famous drone company. Okay, cool. This one. 
<laughs> nice. Google that. <laughs> nice. Uh, and they actually get massive amount of traffic and leads from SEO. They write tons of content. SEO, but it's no, not that people no, are they reading write, the... It is. Like, that's, that's what SEO okay. is. They, re, they write blog posts. No, like I'm wondering if it's building a community of people that actually are constantly following the blog post or if it's just so people I, I reading think, it I think and going to the page. I think that basically if you supply interesting information... Uh, so let me ask you a question. This, yeah. is what I, this is where I was kind of going with that question. Um, I actually once had to do an SEO thing for a company. Uh, it was for a Forex company, and they were, you know, evil... Killing people, okay. people Forex, lives. Forex and content marketing is the best combination in the world. No, no, it is, but it was it was an interesting thing. So they turned around and said, "We have a problem in SEO," and they were like, "How can we fix this problem?" So then I was like, I, I went off, I came up with an idea, and then I came back, and I was working there at the time. So I just came in, I was sitting with my boss and a whole bunch of his bosses, and I said to them, "Listen, I suggest we do a, a blog uh, under a subdomain of the of the website." And they're like, yeah, but what would be on the blog? We already have, like, tons of articles for SEO that go out there. I said, no, I would want to do, uh, I w- it was back when infographics were in. Mm-hmm. I said, I want to do infographics that have nothing to do with Forex. And they're like, what? I go, I, can- I watch the Internet constantly, and I, I kind of love predicting trends. So I would love to be able to predict what the trends are and create the infographics that are need to be up online before everyone's looking for them. And they were like, this is unbelievably stupid. Uh, and then my boss managed to convince them to let me have some money to do my first one. And I did it. And it had nothing to do with Forex. It was like the chances of you dying, statistically. And I did some research and I saw that competitive, if yeah. you had you against something or something against something, that it works better. So I did this infographic with a company called Visually at the time. Yeah. I don't know if you knew. So, um, it was a friend's company. Tal. Yeah, Tal. Yeah. So um, I didn't even know him at the time. I just found their website. I was like, oh, this is cool. Um, so I did this infographic, and it went online and immediately got 5,000 shares within the first, like, 24 hours. 5,000 wow. shares, 24,000 likes, and people split it up and put it on 9 gag. And cool. I was like, great. And then within about a week or two, we saw, like, the results on Google were insane. Like, all of a sudden, all the bad stuff that they had, negative stuff went down. Yeah. These infographics, the blog, and everything went up, and it was, like, cleaner. Um what I'm saying with all that is, how relevant do I need to have it to be whatever it is? Could it just be content that's interesting to people? It doesn't need to actually have to do with theoretically no, no, drones, no, let's say. No, of course. No, of course because it has to be relevant. Because HubSpot is, is one thing, and Cosmetics is one thing, but their articles can go push the boundaries of what that is. You just go a no, little bit higher. No, because I think... I think when most They're not people, talking about data. They're talking about everything. They're talking about uh, no, content and no, emails but, no, but and whatever. But Kismet, basically, what you need to start with is understanding what your target audience really needs to learn and how it attached to you. So... Um, you know, Kids Metrics talks a lot about user acquisition, talks about distribution, because like if you don't have any, uh, like they know that their target audience cares about these things, right? So, um, like, like basically, you build funnels, you build marketing funnels. So you need to like create content that is around that area, not just like saying funnels, 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 funnels. Uh, and I think that Kids Metrics are rather relevant all the time because they know their audience is, is like yeah, but they went went up. They said okay, we're just gonna talk about marketing. No. No. They, these metrics and stuff have articles about anything that has to do with marketing yeah, and creative and content and whatever. No, but also, sits underneath it, that. Also, it's always going to be either backed by data. And basically, the way you should see it, you should look at this as like, this. It, you have to say, my your, can the solution for your friend be create? You don't have to necessarily create content that's directly connected no. to it. No, I think, uh, no, it has to be connected because they, they won't convert. So, for example, you said we had a great SEO, like the, I don't, but the question is, did you get more leads from your website or you just get traffic? I don't care about just getting traffic. I want to get traffic that converts and push the revenue yeah, up. This is the thing. I don't think that when you're doing day-to-day blogs on, on some company that's dealing with HR, let's say, they're doing HR tech, right? Okay. And they're, and they're making a blog. I don't know if HR people are necessarily going and reading the daily blogs. But HR people would be interested in all that stuff that they do on Hub, Hub, uh, HubSpot and Kissmetrics where they offer you a PDF with some uh, data points. Yeah, but like no, that that well, they, that's, that's like a marketing so that's what you use. No. That's what you use to convert. But the day-to-day blog, is that really doing any real conversion? So, no, wait, wait. You're, you're mixing up what the content should be and what the format should be. So in terms of format, I think that if you have, if you, like I think HR people need so much content that they don't have right now. And I think like a really good HR blog would kind of crush it. And because eventually they have so much to deal with, so it could be from interviews, from how to get people, 
uh, how to Let's build a comp- this podcast and make an HR blog. I just think I would crush it. I would love it. That'd be awesome. Uh, if I just had any info on how to be a good HR person. What? <laughs> uh, just look uh, at what they're doing and do the opposite. <laughs> no. <laughs> do, do whatever no, the but, but, but most companies are doing. There's so many new, how to do good interviews. There's so many nuances to doing really good HR work. And providing content about that where other HR personnel would read and learn from it. Now, the question is, what is your product? If you're an HR consultant? No, I was saying B2B. I was trying to say some sort of uh, HR tech is kind of like growing now. Okay. So I said, okay, if you have a B2B, it's HR tech. So, so if I'm, I'm using HR tech, then, I, then it means like this person right now is about to hire new people, right? Mm-hmm. So the content I can talk about goes from how to find people how to screen people, how to manage the HR process within your okay, company. Okay, so now you've written 100,000 of those. You get to the point now where you say, I don't know what else. It never ends. What do you mean it never ends? So, so you know what? Answering my friend's question like directly and yeah. then answering what you... That, that's what so, I'm saying. Okay. You're, it's your friend's question, basically. Let's okay. answer your friend's question. So, so there's like so many ways you can start understanding what else you can write about. You can start... The basic one would be like doing some keyword research. And I would start with going to Google even. Moe's? No, just Google keyword tool. Okay. Uh, but I would just first of all I would just actually start go to Google and write everything that comes to mind in terms of um, topics, that how to do to better, yeah, that are connected. How to do better HR, how to screen people, or how to how do you manage the process for HR in enterprise, whatever, just whatever comes to mind. I would put them every question I have in mind. I would put in an Excel sheet, and then I would also see what are the uh, results that I get on the first three pages, and copy every headline. Um, to that Excel sheet. Now you also have like Google uh, doing Google recommendations kind of thing, where it's like people who were interested in this also ask this. You have like the small box. Mm-hmm. I would uh, copy paste everything there as well to a list in Excel. Then I would post each one of them to um, as a query by itself. See what's related again and again a few times. Start collecting questions from there. I would take. Um, I would then actually go to maybe Wikipedia even, search for stuff that is related to HR. See where the the subcategories. Whatever subcategories is like in Wikipedia and like uh, other terms related, means people are interested in those terms, push it to that Excel sheet. Uh, there's some tools like uh, askthepublic.com um, that you can go in and you write like a keyword and give you like kind of all kinds of uh, questions you can ask. What is HR? How to do HR? Uh, who does HR? Who's responsible for HR? And they have like a who, what, when kind of questions. Take the list, put that in the Excel sheet. Wow, mine is such a different, like, my response, like, I'm thinking of it. It's, you just have all these, like, these things that they're going to go and they're going to get all these answers just no, text-wise and put it in an Excel sheet. No, but it mine go- is, like, I'm saying to myself, okay, if you want, if someone turned around and said, I can't come, just a friend, not like a big, like, I'm not getting paid for no, it, wait, just like a friend. Wait, you have to involve creativity, right, and, and brainstorming is part of the process. But that, that would not be my first go-to because I want to start by answering the questions I know people are asking or interested no, in. No, no, I get it, I get it. No, I'm, I'm, just, uh, I'm just pointing out the difference. Like I'm sitting here and going, okay, you're actually giving me all these little spots. I'm going to go and get keywords and I'm going to get lists and I'm going to get this and this and this and I'm going, just watch random shit on the internet for a couple of minutes and you'll find that there's a ton of way of looking at things in it that connects to what but you're doing. I don't, I don't think it really works well like that in B2B in, in just nurturing. The, people are not... I think that you These can, are creative people. They're writing content. Listen, writing content is not about creativity. It's really? about, it, it's, it's a structure. I find it's, it to be super about creativity. No, I find it's it that... How do you tell the story in a way where people can eat it? Like, they can really consume that and it goes deep. Yeah, but, but there's formulas for everything. Yeah, I'm dyslectic. No one ever told me the formulas. They no, just it's, told it's, me like, it's like <laughs> it's like there's a way to write a, a good explainer post. There's a uh, there's a how to post. There's a good there's a good way to write a list post. You can just okay. research, it's, it's like it's already there. I think it's about giving the people the answer they need because eventually the way people use the internet is two things: either looking for, to solve a problem they have, or either like 100 percent discovery, explore like uh, in explore mode, which is like just give me something interesting. And or entertain me kind of thing. And I think that after you get those topics, you can choose how to deal with them. So you can make it funny. That's where creativity might come in. I get it. Because okay. you can make it funny. You can make it serious. You can make it like into a whole different things. Um, wow. I want a Roy Provarchik dashboard on my computer. <laughs> just weird stuff uh, like that. I just go on the top. I click, oh, content. And then, boom, I see keywords and this and the that. No, but da, it's da, not da. hard because it's basically just understanding what people want from you. So next thing I would do is I would go to Quora 
write the t- write some of the no one answered my question on Quora. <laughs> 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 I, I ask questions on Quora. No one's answering them. Um, Damn it. So I would I would that's what I would do. I would actually copy uh, the question people ask. I would also copy the link to the question because after I'll write a blog post, I'm gonna go back to Quora and say, "Hey, I just wrote a great." I just answered blog post. your question. Yeah. Nice. Uh, I would actually look at top on uh, like top publications from my industry, see what they're writing about, so I know what's interesting for other people. I would might even use like a tool like BuzzSumo or something like that, which is basically gives you uh, amount of shares per content and articles. So I would just use my keyword there, for example, and see what are the most t- shared articles about that keyword. Because then it means the topic is interesting. I would. You can also do this with blogs. So you can put like a URL for a blog and it shows you what are the top articles in that blog. So I would also do that. If I already have a website, I would go to search. Uh, we, uh, what's similar the web? web and see no, what else. No, no. <laughs> search. Uh, what's uh, web search console? Yeah, that's the thing. That's the name. Yeah. If you if you okay, I think that's that was the name. And I will go there and I'll see what um, what queries. You can basically see what what keywords or queries uh, lead to your website. So I actually do that. I would go and see that, and I would see what words, and if there's something relevant that I did not think of, like a question that somehow for some reason I'm ranking for. That's actually interesting. Another thing that you could do, theoretically, mm-hmm. I don't know, you tell yeah. me this is bullshit, but you can go to your sales department and ask what's the number so, of questions we were asking, so yeah. and then just start answering so, those. So that would be like the next step. Go to your sales. I'm very low tech. No, no, <laughs> like I just no, write, but you go, go to people with no, your you, legs. You go, to <laughs> sa- you go to sales. You go to customer support. Um, go to sales. Go to customer support. What are the questions you get the most? What are the troubles, uh, complaints you get the most? What are the, obje- the objections you get the most? Um, I think the sales one is interesting because the the more they're going to start asking questions about like, yeah. can yours do this? Can yours do that? There might actually so, be a tool that probably collects these so, questions and let you have like a report of what's being asked. So most, most people are not doing this the right way, but yeah. So I think when we build, it's also by the when you're building a landing page or a yeah. website, that's so the right way to do it. So when we build sales funnels and email funnels, for example, that's what we do. Is basically. Uh, we do one of two things. We either go to the customer of sales and ask them these questions because I know that if a question gets asked enough, then if I proactively give you the content, you'll be like, oh, okay, they get me. And them going and yeah. yeah. And also like, oh, they get me or, oh, wait, I didn't think about it. That's good that they're thinking about it, et cetera. Um, I would also, like, we also have this trick where we, when we send a survey, which has like a bunch of random stupid questions, and then one question will be like super focused on like a... Uh, uh, what's your biggest con- like if I don't know why random questions I actually no, yes, it's, it's, sitting it's, in a no, room it's, with not re- it's not really random questions it'd be like questions around what I really care about but then I will always have like this one question of like uh, what are the top five things that bother you about your HR process right now okay and then when everybody answers each answer that I'm going to get is going to turn into a piece of content it's interesting because if you're the guy writing content for the blog and you're doing things that are like what Roy just said now <laughs> Then you're gonna be have you're gonna have a lot of information to actually give back to the company right. on what the right. product should do and what should be going 100%. on. Hundred percent. So I, I would never have turned around. I would say, hey, the marketing needs to be involved with the product. The product needs to be involved also with the uh, sales and with the support. So that that's that's how we increase like that's how you're revenue to, for companies. Yeah, basically. that's how you're supposed but to I would, do it. I would, I, would, I never thought I would never add. I would, the I, would, I, would <laughs> act, I would even go to let's say. Um, I would even go and speak with my analyst and see what are like the top actions people are doing with my product, what are the top features people are using, and then I would do like guides on how to use those features better. That's cool. I like these more. I know right. that's weird, but let's no, say, it's, I it's, like the idea of wait, using the stuff it's in a, the company it's a to be able to It's a different it out. stage of the funnel because the how to use this tool to do how no 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 not that I'm turning around if they're using a specific part of the tool then that maybe that's what's going to attract the next people right no but but so. So the not about how to all use all these the tool, que- but no. just to say, if you're looking to achieve So X. all these questions, this is the thing, that all these questions, eventually you build them and they're part of the funnel. So if, for example, somebody's saying, how do you manage the HR process? You know, uh, um, what's, the, what's the HR role in the company? That's very high in the funnel. This person is not about to buy your HR tech for now. But when you go to, like, uh, how do you manage your HR process in your company? He's getting closer or she's getting closer, and then when you have, like, uh, uh, what questions should you ask in your next HR interview, you know, this person is really into the process, and then let's say that your HR tech is about how to find good candidates. No, it's a... It's a I get it. The higher the discussion is, the right. closer you get and to then, the and then, and then when maybe you get to, like, how to... How to str- and then you get, like, how to streamline... Uh, your HR process with your team using your using, HR department, yeah, like. u- using the tool. 
And then you go from, like, super uh, high level to, like, oh, I can do whatever I need with this. And if your content is good enough, then you so nurture them. it's possible that, that one of the tips could easily be just look at your content and see what level you're talking to the people that you're trying to get at the so company. When, when, up, you, when you build, yeah, so when you build your content strategy, you always need to think about the funnel. Like, I'm writing this. So we, I have this thing, this method. Nice. This formula, this method. tip, this spreadsheet, this... Uh, I have this meth method. Head. <laughs> Uh, this meth head at home. No. Uh, so, um, so we call it like the content metrics. And what we basically do is that for each client, we have a few um, classifiers. So we have personas, who's the persona I'm trying to target, mm-hmm. stage of the funnel. Uh, we, all, we always have content categories for our clients, like what do we talk about in general as a company. Uh, format and channel. And every piece of content we put out has to go through that metrics. So, because if I'm writing for somebody who's like a where, like a persona, which is persona A, awareness stage, content category A, text versus video versus audio, whatever, it's gonna go on my blog, YouTube. Then each one of those gets a different angle for the content. So, by following that method, then I know that I will never like I'm always gonna be uh, um, focused on. On, like, on creating content that will help my That will my actually funnel. hit the target that you want. Exactly. Because I know that I have to answer these questions and, and put those into into persp- uh, perspective, and the brief will always be focused. So I, I know that I never go to an irrelevant content piece, and uh, and I know that I kind of get to know the people I'm writing for as well. Uh, and I kind of be, be able to manage it to different channels or formats. and Because even what uh, what's the... What's, what's the even think about, let's say we're still in the HR tech kind of idea. Um, so let's even think about the widespread article, the big one. The, um, what are the HR roles in a company? So if I'm sending this to somebody who's like a CEO as a persona, right? Uh, so he's trying to hire an HR maybe, or maybe he's supposed to do it now, just for now because his company is too small. So the angle is very different than if I'm writing for somebody like a beginner HR person in a company. The angle, like it's yeah, really, of course. Uh, the entire tone of voice would be different. And then if it's like, uh, what is the roles of HR? It's like awareness phase. It's going to be like a 500, 600 words long article, uh, and which we're going to talk about, like in general, what you should be in charge of. Uh, p- keeping people happy, finding the right candidates, building culture, whatever. Yeah. But if I'm going to say, okay, this is the same article now, I'm pushing it to somebody who's like uh, engaged or like in the mid funnel or bottom of the funnel, I would go really in depth with what the roles are. So when you talk about culture, culture can mean uh, events. It can also mean, like, how do you treat, I don't know, complaints in the company? How do you do processes? I think culture is more about just making people feel loyal to their brand. Never mind. Yeah, but I would yeah. go into tactics, maybe. Okay. I would go into, like, different examples. I would go deeper, even though it's, like, the same question. Yeah. It's basically and, seeing and a guy then, sitting and then, down and he's, no, like, Googling, how am I going to hire my first HR right. person who's going to hire HR people after? <laughs> Yeah, but wait, but, like, oh, but, okay. but that's like, again, depends on the final persona. Yeah. And then you have this, and then you go, okay, I'm going to do a video of this. So the video could be two minutes long and has to go ABC versus saying I'm going to do a podcast out of it, I'm going to do a um, blog post out of it, et cetera. So through the content metrics, what we actually do is that um, you're always on spot. Uh, and just, as, just giving some more examples for how you can find like really good content or ideas for content, Go to Facebook, LinkedIn, Slack groups around your uh, uh, around your topic. Whatever people are talking about, that's what I want to get. You know, uh, you can go to um, leading blogs and publications and go and look at the comments. What people want to want know more. What the questions they're asking about yeah. the things. Yeah. Um, you can go on Twitter and follow some keywords. You can follow. I would also follow what influencers are sharing. Because influencers, first of all, they're usually very uh, well thought of about what they're going to share. But also, they either share something that is very hot right now, is already trending, or what they're talking about right now will trend in a while. So you just want to be prepared. Um, what else? I would actually ask people in my company about, like, what would they, like, uh, like do you have any questions about our product? Whatever they will ask is a good content piece. Um, for awareness stage, by the way, a is lot. It actually, is it is it questions about the product or is it questions about the user? About what we do. Okay. Um, for awareness stage, a lot of the time, what I would recommend is that you go and talk about your product or industry to somebody who doesn't know it at all, and every question they ask you is a good awareness piece. 
Because if you say, like, hey, we we have a product, it's an HR. Meet someone who basically, yeah, I used to, I, like, I always want, when people come to meet me and they're, they're like, oh, I want some creative ideas of how I can better pitch something or better do this. I'm like, okay, great. Just record the next meeting you're in. Right. Because the questions that person's going to ask is going to be all the things you don't have up front that they want to know. Yeah. Um, it's like, it's surprising to me. I know this is weird. Like, I don't think you should be wearing a wire to your meetings, but generally no, no, <laughs> you, no, you should be recording or, or writing down the questions and things being asked or even bring someone with you. Bring a minion. Have some guy sit in the corner with you and just yeah. write down the stuff because that's what's going to actually help you uh, yeah. really understand what people want to know. I love it that people don't actually improve from pitch to pitch because they never try and answer the questions they got. They go with the pitch that they have or they go with... Uh, they go with like a concept they have and then they go into different meetings they get tons of questions and instead of saying okay I got five questions about this this is that I didn't answer clear. that in my yeah. exactly you don't improve the pitch you just kind of oh, keep people going are, and say oh he asked questions but that's just him yeah and you know and like, usually when somebody starts asking questions everybody has the same question yeah if they didn't see it other people want to right too. Um, so social media is obviously like a good option um I think that just by doing this, you might have, like, at least, like, 30, 40. Yeah, you got a ton of stuff from what you just said. I'm just saying, like, I'm trying to go back into, like, uh, in some way, uh, you know, again, if someone just asked me the question, I would have ran to giving him ideas. I I, I wouldn't necessarily know how to, or giving him ideas of how to get ideas. Yeah. Less of how to collect exactly what questions people want the answers to. Like, I would go through different perspectives of what's trending and I would try to get further away so I can get more people to see it. Uh, so, yeah. So, so I would be like, oh, right now more people talk about, uh, like, um, the MoMA restaurant, right? Yeah. One of the top restaurants in the world. And they're talking about how amazing his restaurant and how he infuses his restaurant with so, so many levels of creativity. Right? And I'd be like, okay, maybe that's how you should structure your next article. It should be about... Look how MoMA in, infuses no, creativity but, to wait, different but, levels of their but, uh, Yeah, their but system. again, that's like angle. Because you know what? It's like, I think, the, uh, um, on the yeah, last... But, but on the, the election... doesn't mean anything? No, it's like, it's like in the election time, when it was like, everybody yeah, was like, how, was doing how to article, do the, yeah. the, sub, the, the high from Obama as a subject What line, we could learn or, about the social media of... Uh, no, the, it's even like uh, how to manage your Twitter account like Obama, how yeah. to... But so you have to follow trends... Uh, you know, so with one of her clients, it was a cloud computing company. But wait, does it not have, like, it I, had, wa- I want you to say something. I want a sentence to be said like this. Okay. A Roy Pavarchik sentence where he says, um, you need to look at trends to use these because by using the trends, you're going to get more people, more eyeballs to kind of come to here, which might make them more interested in what uh, what the... The, like the spin off. Uh, so, know. yes. So, I like have, I, that, that's what but I was saying. It's, in the but it's, of, but it has to be something a little it, not But it has to be a combination. It. But it has to be a combination. So, it needs to be through the story told through. I'll, what's I'll, give, I'll give you an example. Right? So, one of our clients, um, we basically uh, we did two pieces of content for them that were not at all. Um, they were, so, they were. Okay. So, one of them was called like a game of clouds. Which was like basically a cloud computing map looked like and felt like a Game of Thrones kind of thing. Okay. Because like the new season was coming up, so we leveraged yeah, yeah. it. And so that's like a, it was really big. Um, but another th- client we had is that we went through their, we basically went through their uh, like trends of what their audience really like, and then we uh, so the, like their fans were like obviously crazy nerds for Star Trek. So when the new Star Trek movie came out, we did something about it because we knew they cared about it. Nice. So we kind of celebrated on their social media. It's like a happy Star Trek day, whatever. Okay. Uh, so you should use trends, but I think it also really depends on the company. It, it doesn't really always work. Um, you should always be minded to what's going on around you. If there's something new that's going on, if there's like a new trend coming up, if there's like a political situation, TV shows, whatever it is that it is in the culture, you should be aware of. Yeah, uh, but you should understand if that's what your target audience is aware of, or is that what you're aware of, right? So, um, so I've I've actually been uh, been thinking a lot of time because I want to write a, an article about um, about the, like uh, if you're every client that we get is always like it's kind of really worth it because people reading blogs is still and and my example is always like Marvel comics versus DC. Okay. Like Mar- the reason Marvel makes billion dollar movies one after the other right now is because they've spent 10 years creating amazing content that that 
builds your you as a loyal fan to uh you know to to almost anonymous characters like Black Panther, Captain Marvel, Ant Man. Nobody would ever imagine these movies. Yeah. But like Ant Man just crossed the one billion dollar revenue. That's insane. And that's like I even see. I don't think I'm still the first one to the okay. to the halfway. Okay, and like this is not a big character. He's not nothing. Ha, Ant Man. <laughs> nice pun intended. Uh, but because but they did amazing content marketing with how they introduce new characters, with how they kind of tease you for new. They nurture you into liking characters you would not care about. If Black Panther would have come out without Civil War coming out beforehand, nobody would ever know it exists. Nobody would care about that character. But yeah. they build the arc and they kind of intertwine this. And that's really good content marketing versus DC, which is like sales, sales, like Batman, Wonder Woman, Justice League, like right around the corner. Why? Just because. And they try to cram whatever Marvel did for like the first four years of movies or three years of movies done with five different movies into building to one momentum. They've done this like... Wonder Woman half-assed uh, Batman movie, and it just went straight for the sales. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like that's the exact difference. This is like Batman con- versus Superman, w- which was a crap ass. Yeah. Yeah, it was like a really bad movie. Yeah. It was they kind of tied it up to Martha. The, Martha. <laughs> that was yeah. the tie-up. Uh, both ca- have a mom with that same name. There's a there's a there's, there's a there's a part in Mission Impossible where there's the the guy who plays Superman is there. Ah and yeah, he's fighting yeah, off Tom with the Cruise. mustache. And really at the end it was like a like a big fight and I was like, I wonder if like Tom Cruise is we just said my the mother's name is Martha. They would be just like, yeah, both cool. That's the end of the movie. Yeah, that would be like fucking. That's it. Um, so I I use data and basically go and ask you in a way you you basically wanna. Uh, see what your audience is talking about and asking, and you kind of always win. That's how I see it. Uh, so that would be my advice for how to get more content ideas when you ran out of ideas. Just go to where your audience is at and uh, and try to get as much information from them as well as possible. Um, cool. I think that's it. I think we answered it. Might have been a little long, but we got a whole bunch of options in that one. So yeah. So boom. Go ahead, write... Uh, You're welcome. Content all over your face. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know. Oh. That might have been too much. Anyways, <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, if you're listening, please like, subscribe, comment, uh, review. review, share with a friend, give yeah. to someone random, walk up to someone. Buy somebody you know, lunch. It's like you just you just got to pass on that love. So you just yeah. walk up to someone on the bus. Wait, but don't pass the love if it's not in consent. Oh, yeah, please. That's like please a don't. bad pass the love no. kind of. But then we're talking about the good love spending and spreading yeah. and stuff. Just give it give it around. Give it to people. Give the love. Uh, this is Roy and Jonathan Khan, and we are signing out. out. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>